Hello, it's your boy David. Up, there's a re-upload X Men Marathon. I'm gonna put the first three episodes up together in this video. The fourth episode is a movie commentary in full. Not gonna put an intro on that. I'm just gonna upload that separately, so that'll be up after this one. Just so you know. Enjoy. Hello, it's your boy David. Off, and welcome to Movie Monday. We spent the first. Sorry if I look scary, by the way. I look a bit scary in this because I got one lighting or not two. But anyway, as I was saying. I just a different setup. It's the same like I'm in the same room just like to the back and I'm standing up I just thought it might be good to be uh, to do a different setup and obviously to do stability as well Because for the for the Godzilla marathon I obviously just held a camera in my hand and just talked to you while I was sitting in the chair It was, it was not very professional. It doesn't need to be to be fair I just need to talk about it, but we need some stability with the camera and I think there's a lot of wind outside I don't know if you, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's the weather's pretty bad at the moment so English weather it was very hot last week in February which never happens in England and now it's very stormy it's more like February now to be to be honest I mean it's March now so yeah <laughs> at this rate there'll be snow in April like last year as well anyway yeah uh, let's let's not get off track so we spent the first two months of movie Monday and I obviously introduced this series in in the New Year's and um, we spent the first two months the first eight weeks watching every single Godzilla movie along with some King Kong movies as well and some other ones movies as well but mainly Godzilla movies we watched there was 38 of them I think was there 38 yeah I think there are 38 Godzilla movies which we watched all of them over a big series and it was, it was a fun series to do I'm so glad I checked it out I'm so glad the Heisei period especially love that mate love it but anyway we are moving on to a new marathon an X-Men marathon I'm doing this because obviously Disney is buying Fox and uh, it's not, still not done yet. I'm pretty sure they put the bid in in 2017 and the deal is still not done. The last I checked, they needed a approval from the EU and China as well. And I think they needed other things to go through, like there was investigation and stuff regarding um, finances, I think. And Comcast wanted to buy Fox as well, so there was an argument there. And yeah, the point is Disney are in the process of buying Fox and and I'm pretty sure it's happening. Like, I don't see it not happening now. I think if it wasn't happening, we probably would have heard about it by now. And I think the deal was going to go through. It's just taking a long time. But anyway, Disney are buying Fox. But regardless of when it's announced, it might be announced in the summer, any Fox movie that's currently in development is going to be released, pretty much. Any Fox movie that's currently filming in post-production, it's going to it's, it's going to be released but anything that's not been in production yet will not be released will not be a thing so they can't do Deadpool 3 anything like that but anyway the point is one thing Fox have done is they've had the X-Men and Fantastic Four as well but let's forget about them they've had the X-Men um, they, they bought the rights off Marvel obviously because Marvel were in debt the wind is crazy Marvel were obviously in debt at the time very almost bankrupt that they had to sell spider-man and the x-men the most popular characters that sell them off to just to stay afloat obviously it's different now but yeah now marvel look at them now at one point they were close to being bankrupt so they had to sell spider-man their poster boy they had to sell the x-men there's a movie rights obviously not the comic book rights but they had to sell these characters movie rights to other studios just to survive and now many years later they're owned by Disney, they're making billions upon billions, and they're still going strong. I'm sure they'll make more billions with Endgame as well. Um, I'm, it'll make at least a couple, it'll make, it'll make at least a billion through ticket sales, and another billion probably through toy sales, to be honest, because they're pretty popular with kids, uh, obviously. So, they're in a great place right now, and now, Disney's buying Fox, which means Marvel takes back the X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. And they'll be in the, I'm sure they'll be in the MCU. I'm sure they'll introduce them because they're two big characters not to be introduced. Um, unfortunately, there's no Hugh Jackman, uh, but you know, hopefully they cast a good Wolverine because he's my he's my favorite Marvel character, my number one Marvel character. I do love Wolverine mainly because of Hugh Jackman, but I hope they do a good casting. So yeah, this is meant to be marathon about the X Men movies. I haven't even talked about them yet. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what the MCU does, but. I also appreciate Fox. I appreciate Fox for bringing the X-Men onto the, onto the big screen. I do appreciate, like, especially First Class, Days of Future Past. I cannot wait to watch those two movies. I love those two movies. Days of Future Past is, for me, in the top 10 superhero movies of all time. Like, Days of Future Past, I think, is, is that good. I think it's so damn good. Logan, Logan, for me, is the second best 
superhero movie of all time. That's a hot take right there. The Dark Knight number one, Logan number two. My opinion, I don't know if you agree, but I think Logan is that good. So I appreciate you, Fox, for bringing this thing onto the big screen. First Class, Days of Future Past, Logan, Deadpool, and Deadpool 2. Those movies are, they're, they're all great. I appreciate you, Fox. So thank you for your services to these characters. I think you've done well. Anyway, um, this episode is about... It's gonna be, it's not gonna, I'm not, I'm not going into detail. I'm not gonna go into detail. I'm just gonna like tell you my brief thoughts on each movie. So, this marathon will be like four episodes long, probably. But it might not be four weeks in a row. I might interrupt it for Infinity War Endgame because I want to do videos on that as well. Uh, maybe Captain Marvel, I'm not sure. Depends on when I watch the movie. If, if there's a lot of talking points, I'll talk about it in movie one day, probably. We'll see. We'll see, but I'm seeing that this week. Um, but yeah, let's just get into the actual marathon. Um, on Saturday night, I watched three X-Men movies, the original trilogy, so the first three X-Men movies, X-Men, X2, and The Last Stand. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I am not a huge fan of these movies. Um, I like some of the characters. Patrick Stewart plays a good Pro Professor X. Ian McKellen, great uh, Magneto. Um, Storm, I love Halle Berry as Storm. Hugh Jackman, I love, of course. Um, Rogue as well, I like Rogue, uh, Jean. I like the characters, but I'm not a big fan of these uh, of, these, of this original trilogy, to be honest. I don't think any of them are great, but I do think the first two are pretty good. The last one, terrible. The last stand. I'd... The only one that was worse was, worse was uh, Origins. Uh, we'll get to that in the next episode. Um, but, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I'm gonna say why. Um, I wasn't um, a huge fan of superheroes in the past. I only became a big fan in 2012, and I gained it through the movies as well. So I didn't read comics. I read two comics in my life. One of them was about Superman and Lex Luthor. I think Lex Luthor found out he was uh, Clark Kent and tried to kill him good tonight. That's all I remember really. I read a comic about Superman and Lex Luthor, and I read another comic about the Hulk, about five pages, and that's about it. My comic history is nothing. I did recently buy Infinity Gauntlet, so I want to read that and review it actually, and I want to read some Batman comics soon. He's a very fictional character, so I would read comics of him. Off track again with this video. Off, off track, but um, the point is, my love for superhero movies came through the movies. Um, yeah, my, my love for superheroes is what I mean to say, came through the movies. It came through two, two things. First of all, the Dark Knight trilogy. The Dark Knight trilogy did it for me. That was like, wow, I want to see more of these types of movies. To be, I mean, the Dark Knight was different to the rest, to be honest, but... I wanted to see more of the genre superheroes after seeing that trilogy. So in 2012, I watched Batman Begins and The Dark Knight for the first time, and The Dark Knight Rises and I watched in the cinema because it was so there was a lot of hype around it. So I thought I watched the first two first, loved them, watched the third one, and also it's not just that; it's also the Avengers movie. That one did a lot for me as well. That one got me into the MCU, got me into Marvel. I loved that movie, and uh, yeah. But but before 2012. I wasn't a big fan, which is why I mentioned all that. I wasn't a big fan. I liked Superman at the time, even though I wasn't a big fan. I was more into like action comedies and uh, Pixar movies and Disney stuff and DreamWorks as well. I love Shrek, Ice Age, and I love those DreamWorks productions. Um, but the point is, with superheroes, I liked Superman. I saw the Christopher Reeve movies. I liked them, and I liked him. He was my favourite superhero, Superman. Until the Dark Knight trilogy, it was Superman's favourite superhero. And it was just him and Spider-Man, really. I watched the Spider-Man Sam Raimi movies as, as, a, as a kid, and I loved them. Grew up with them. They were classics. Uh, I, can't, I want to see them again, again at some point. I bought, I bought the Blu-ray Blu recently as well, so I might see them at some point. Maybe, do, maybe for Movie Monday. Might rewatch them. It'll be a good uh, throwback. But um, anyway, it was just Spider-Man and, and Superman that I really liked. I watched the Hulk movie in like, the, the 2002 one. I was okay with that. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and the X-Men movies, I didn't watch in the cinema. I didn't watch them until like 2010, I think. I never even watched Origins or First Class in the cinemas. Like, I really wasn't a fan of X-Men. Even after I got into like... Um, Actually, yeah, after the Dark Knight trilogy, I thought, I want to watch more. D then I decided to go and watch the rest of the X-Men movies, basically. That's how I got into it. And when I, when I first watched the original trilogy, I was like, it's alright. I like the characters, but it's alright. The third one was awful, though. The thing is, the third one had so much potential, because... Um, yeah, I was going to mention, by the way, uh, <laughs> this, this marathon, the whole point of it, is to build up to the Dark Phoenix uh, movie in June. 
I forgot to mention that for some reason. I was meant to mention that during the merger talk. Uh, where, because obviously before Fox goes to Marvel, um, before Fox, Fox goes to Disney, but, but before the X-Men goes to Marvel, Dark Phoenix is the last X-Men team up movie before the deal was, uh, before the deal was finalized, I think. And there's one more called The New Mutants. So that one will come out as well. Um, that's not an X-Men movie though, that's about mutant kids. It's like a horror movie, that'll come out in the summer. But the, the main thing is Dark Phoenix. And in The Last Stand, they did the Dark Phoenix storyline, but it just didn't fit. It just didn't, I mean, it fit, but it didn't work. The way they did it, it just wasn't good. Um, especially the last scenes as well. Well, we didn't get to see her properly in the with the Phoenix Force until the end of the movie. And I think that kind of ruined it, to be honest. Um, and I think like having her as uh, Magneto's, Ma having her as working for Magneto was a little bit off as well. So hopefully this Dark Phoenix movie, which I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to it. I saw the second trailer, I liked it to be honest. Um, I feel like death, I think they spoiled the death though in that trailer. I think they did, but I think this is an opportunity for them. This movie, Dark Phoenix, is an opportunity for them to do what they did in the last stand, but this time do it right. I think they have potential to do it. I think, I prefer the younger cast as well. The younger cast I prefer for the most part. Jean, Sophie Turner, I don't love her that much more than the than the original one, but I like them about the same, but I prefer um, Jane McAvoy and Michael Fassbender as Professor X Magneto. I just prefer those two. I prefer the younger versions of those characters. Um, Storm, not so much. Storm, the older version, definitely the previous version. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to those movies yeah, in a few episodes, in like episode three probably, um, but yeah, um, yeah, they they ruined it with the last stand. I feel they ruined it. And the first two movies, when I first watched them, uh, when I was uh, quite a bit younger, um, yeah, I says, as I said, I thought they were right. And then I eventually watched Origins, and I was like, oh, oh dear, what, what, what happened here? Then they kind of messed that up as well at the end. And then I watched First Class, and I was like. Okay, I mean, I'm suddenly into the X-Men a lot more now because that movie did a lot for me. And then Days of Future Past came along, I was mesmerized. Then Apocalypse came along and that was a disappointment, but we'll get to that. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about the whole thing now instead of like other episodes. I, I will talk about the rest of it in the future episodes. Um, the Wolverine movie came out as well, the second one. I was all right with that and Logan was amazing. So Logan will be the last one. It does, we don't need to watch Logan for Dark Phoenix, because as far as we know, Wolverine is not in Dark Phoenix. Hugh Jackman has quit. He's quit. If he didn't quit, he would have been in Deadpool 2, but he wasn't, so he's definitely out. There is no way they're hiring a guy for Wolverine just for one movie, just for him to just for him to get fired again when he goes to Disney. It just, it's not gonna work. So there's, there's no Wolverine. Uh, I think we know that for sure. So it's gonna be interesting because they, they centered a lot of the movies around Wolverine, and sometimes it wasn't the best idea, but when it did center around him, it was actually, for the most, actually Days of Future Past centered a lot around him, and I think, I think that was the best one, I feel. That was the best, uh, apart from Logan, that was the best one. So Wolverine was such a great character, so iconic, and obviously he's not in this one. But I still think they can do really well without him, um, and this is the chance for them to prove that they can make a great movie without him. Um, to be fair, they did in, in first class. He was, he, was, he was only in there for like two seconds, Wolverine, so. I think this Dark Phoenix is a good opportunity to see what they can do without Wolverine being such a main focus of it and for it being such a big story and like Dark Phoenix as well. That's going to be, I said Phoenix, Dark Phoenix is such a big storyline and to do it without Wolverine, do it without Hugh Jackman, then it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how they do it. So uh, yeah, pretty much my thoughts on the original trilogy. I'm saying this now, but I spent like 10 minutes, like 12 minutes of this talking about everything else that's not the original trilogy. This episode is meant to be about the original trilogy and I've spent like 2 minutes talking about it. I'm very sorry, this is very poorly structured. When I, when I review and talk about movies, I don't usually write a script or anything, I just, I just talk. I just come here and I just flip and talk, okay? But when it's a TV show, I write down stuff and I talk about the points on, on my notepad, on my phone. So I don't know why I do it differently for movies, but yeah anyway. The first and second movie, I felt, they, they were pretty good movies. Like, I don't think they were bad, it's just that I wasn't a big fan of them. I honestly wasn't a big fan of the first two movies. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I mean, they, they were not bad, they were pretty good actually. And they, it was great casting, characters were great, but... Just something about it just doesn't... 
I never look back on that and think, wow, those are great movies. I just look back and think, yeah, they're all right, even now. That is, that is, that is what it sounds like when the wind is pushing against this, this building. I live in a big block and yeah. <laughs> I this video is all over the place, but um, yeah, I just wasn't a huge fan. I just wasn't a huge fan, but I do like the story and I did. I do think it was interesting, um, the, both the heroes and the villain side. It was good to see like two perspectives. One perspective, one one perspective of Charles Xavier was uh, that he could see humans and mutants coexisting, a peaceful world, whereas Magneto sees more of a war coming, um, because there's a, there's a lot of humans that look down on mutants. Mutants basically represent minorities in real life, technically. Because in real life you have black people, females, uh, gay, LGBT community, they're all, uh, they're protesting about rights, ETC in real life, obviously. And you would get that in the Marvel world with, with mutants, because they are looked down on. And it's not just, and it's not, uh, obviously, it's not like real life where it's a colour thing or a sexuality thing. Uh, in, in, in Marvel, obviously, mutants have powers and they're dangerous. And obviously, when, when, you, uh, when you oppress people, when you uh, attack people and look down on them, eventually some of them will fight back. That's just how it is. That's, that's just how people react to things. And when mutants fight back, they have powers. So they're obviously going to be dangerous. And when mutants cause um, destruction and kill a lot of people, obviously a lot of humans will be elevated in their arguments against mutants. They, it, they'll think they're a disease, ETC. So it, it goes pretty deep. It's, it's pretty interesting who, who and what the X-Men are. And I think it's a good dynamic to, uh, to do movies on. And uh, yeah, I think it's just done really well um, in, in, the, in most of the movies anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm still not a big fan of the first two movies. I'm still not a huge fan, even though they were actually pretty good. But I don't know, I guess, I, I guess because I didn't really grow up with them and I watched them really late, maybe that's a factor. But I really liked First Class, so I, 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 don't know what it, I don't know what it is. I'm just not a huge fan of them. But I would watch them again, the first two anyway, not The Last Stand. That was a bit painful at times to watch. That was just all over the place. They just didn't get it right. They just didn't get it right. So hopefully Dark Phoenix is what The Last Stand was supposed to be, hopefully. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think Scott will play a huge role in Dark Phoenix for sure. Because there's no Wolverine this time. So I do think Scott will play a huge role. And it'll be interesting to see how they end it. Like, what happens? Like, does she get defeated? Or is she too hard to stop? Because if you look at the trailers, it just seems like they don't know what to do. The X-Men or Magneto. Like, well, what are they going to do about it? So yeah, it should be interesting. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I just love the journey. Like, the main, my favourite parts of the X-Men movies a Wolverine's journey, to be honest. Even though that doesn't really matter towards Dark Phoenix, not relevant to it. I still like Wolverine's journey, just, I just love it. And I also love Charles Xavier's journey from the first movie up until Logan. Uh, Magneto's journey, both versions of him, obviously the younger, older version. So, it's gonna be interesting. Oh, oh, and, and obviously, um, the timelines of this thing is all over the place, isn't it? It's like all over the place. Like, you wonder like, I'm pretty sure Dark Phoenix is only like a few years before the original Eggman movie, and they obviously look a lot longer. They look a lot longer, younger. They look, a, they look a lot younger. So that's a bit weird. The timeline is just all over the place. But I think that, despite the fact there's a there's an there's a really bad timeline, you can still enjoy these movies, especially Days of Future Past. That is just unbelievable, unbelievable. We're not going to say much about the directors though, about the uh, director. Let's just not mention the name but I appreciate I appreciate quite a few of these movies and I can't wait to see um, the better ones for me the prequel movies for me are easily the better movies so I can't wait to see those apart from Apoc Apocalypse Apocalypse wasn't that bad to be honest the thing is right this ties into the last stand actually when it comes to superhero movies um, I love storylines I love when it's grounded when it's uh, a, a not grounded I, I, like, I like a good range, I like a good range of superhero movies, but what I love, one of the things I love the most, one of the things, is huge battles. I love huge battles. The battle at the end of the Avengers movie, the first Avengers movie, was, was great. Age of Ultron, end of it, was a massive battle as well. It wasn't as good as the first one, but still, it, it, was, it was pretty fun at times. Um, Infinity War, Wakanda fight, Titan fight. Those are big battles that I enjoyed, like, I, I enjoy big battles that involve a lot of heroes, a lot of villains, just 
just a lot of characters just having a huge battle when it's done right when it's showed in the right way it's just and with the right build up as well it's just so amazing to watch um it wasn't quite the same with the last stand the last stand had a big battle at the end it just I'm usually excited about that stuff, but that movie I wasn't. Um, and Apocalypse as well had a huge battle at the end. And to be fair, I quite liked that battle, to be honest. Another one, another example is BVS, uh, the Doomsday Battle. I, I liked, I enjoyed that battle. That movie gets a lot of hate, which I don't think it deserves. Um, that's another idea for Movie Monday, actually. Another idea for uh, Movie Monday to talk about BVS, actually. I'll probably do that at some point in the future, probably next year, to be honest. But still, um, the point is I love big battles, and Apocalypse had a big one at the end. And to be fair, it was all right. It was all right, better than The Last Stand anyway, but uh, it was a bit underwhelming. So I'll talk about that more, I guess. Not in too much detail, but more when I actually watch them again. And also another thing, when you do rewatch movies from a long time ago, you kind of miss a lot of details, you kind of forget a lot of details, so uh, even though I was watching these again, it felt a bit, it felt quite fresh, because it's been a while since I watched the uh, original trilogy. Lost my voice there, sorry, but it's been a while since I watched the original trilogy. I think I only watched, I only watched them once, I think, in the past, maybe twice at the most. Uh, the first three movies anyway, first class I watched about three times, uh, Days of Future Past about five, six times in total. I love those ones. Logan I've seen about uh, five times. That's very depressing, but a great movie. Um, but the original ones, I watched like once, I think. So, yeah, I missed a lot of details. I forgot a lot of details in it. So it felt quite fresh to me still. And a lot of the, a lot of the powers were cool. Um, what's, the, what, what's the guy's name again? Rogue's, uh, Rogue's boyfriend, the Ice... Uh, is it Iceman? I think it's Iceman. He, he was pretty cool. And, and the fire guy, whatever his name is. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool powers in this. Like... Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty cool, it's pretty interesting, this. Um, the X-Men movies are interesting. They're very, they're, they're a bit different uh, to the rest because it focuses on a group of people that have powers that are not necessarily superheroes, but they have powers and they have abilities and they look down on as, as diseased people as well because they are humans, but with special abilities, with, uh, um, I guess, evolution is the right word for it. Or a mutation. People of a mutation. I also liked uh, Magneto's origin as well, with the with the concentration camp as well in the back in World War Two. Um, that was it. Gave a very deep. It gave a very deep uh, storyline to it, and you can see like based on that, you can understand more of why he doesn't really believe in humans. You know, um, he he prefers to uh, he he prefers to he prefers the mutants to be more more dominant, be the more dominant race because he doesn't. He doesn't like the humans, pretty much. Uh, and and to be fair, the um, the Germans in World War Two, they are they're an example of what humans can be, because at, at some point in time, everyone was innocent. You know, when when you're a baby, you're you're innocent. I mean, you you hate his thoughts, hate his thoughts. So the Nazis, at one point, when they were kids, when they were babies, they were just innocent little children. And look what they turned into. Look, look what they turned into. So I think they're an example of what 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 humans are capable of. So I think that ties in really well with, with Magneto's I with, with Magneto's I with Mag. I've messed up my words there. With. I think it ties in really well with Magneto's ideology. Um, and, and the way he thinks about humans, the way he sees humans as something beneath mutants. So I think that's pretty interesting. So yeah, anyway, that's all I got to say really. I, 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 this was all over the place to be honest and I spent too much time talking about other things. But I thought I'd just, you know, introduce the marathon. The next episodes will be shorter than this. Maybe not the fourth one for a reason that I won't tell you yet. Uh, but yeah, it might be interrupted because of another video. But we'll see, we'll get through this marathon definitely before Dark Finish comes out. I watched this week X-Men Origins Wolverine and the Wolverine, so Wolverine 1 and 2. Number 3, Logan, will be the last episode of this of this marathon. That'll be his own episode, it'll be right at the end. It'll be the fourth episode. episode it's four episodes of this marathon. Um, this episode and last episode, episode 4, is not necessary. It's not necessary. We just need episode 1 and 3 because this is a build-up to Dark Phoenix. And Wolverine is not in Dark Phoenix, as far as we know anyway. I'm pretty sure Hugh Jackman is not coming back and... I'm, I don't think they would cast a new person just for their last movie before it goes to Disney anyway. So, you know, there's not going to be any Wolverines. So these episodes are not necessary. They're, they're not. But I still wanted to add them on because I'm doing a marathon next one movie. I'm going to watch six of them anyway. So I thought I might as well just add the other one on anyway. Add the other trilogy on. They're still, like, connected to the X-Men universe anyway. So 
I don't see why not. I know Deadpool is as well. By that logic, by that logic, I should include Deadpool. But the thing is, Deadpool doesn't cross over with the rest of the X. I mean, Deadpool was in Origins, to be fair. But that was that was the the wrong Deadpool, the bad Deadpool. That doesn't count, okay? I know Ryan Reynolds was there, technically, but it still doesn't count, okay? It doesn't count to me, damn it. So we're not doing Deadpool, even though I, I would love to watch them. Like I love an excuse to watch those movies again, but. There's many an X-Men marathon, and Wolverine was actually in the X-Men in the movies. So, that's why Deadpool's not here. He wasn't in the X-Men in the movies, so... Yeah, let's not, that, let's, let's not explain that here. We don't need to explain that. But yeah, I'm still adding these Wolverine movies in anyway, because he was part of the X-Men, and he was part of the main... He was part of the stories in both trilogies. Days of Future Past, and the original trilogy, he was, he was the main character throughout as well, so... It's, even though we don't need it for Dark Phoenix, I think I'm still going to add it on. I spent too much time to talk about that. But let's just quick talk about the movies this time. So yeah, um, I sat through Origins again. The monstrosity of a movie. This is one of the worst. When I think of bad super movies, I think it, this is one of the things I think of. I also think of Thor The Dark World, um, Catwoman. Oh, no, I've only seen like half a Catwoman. I didn't even finish that movie. Um, Fantastic Four. Basically all of them. I haven't seen the first. There was, there was one in like the 80s, I think. I never watched that one, but I watched the two the two in like 05, I think, and 07, they, they came out. And the latest one, that was the worst one. Um, so yeah, I think of those movies and Origins Wolverine is one of them. It is really bad. The main problem was Deadpool. The way they did Deadpool was very frustrating. But to be fair, because of this movie, we eventually got the 2016 Deadpool. So, you know, not everything bad came out of it. It may be a bad movie and fans are pissed off about um, how the movie turned out. But, you know, because of this movie, because of the backlash from fans, Ryan Reynolds for years, he campaigned and campaigned for a Deadpool movie. And eventually, he got it. He, it's just, I, I just love um, the way he fought for it. And uh, yeah, he got his reward in the end. And we got our rewards by getting those Deadpool movies. And uh, yeah, he is Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. He nails it now. But um, yeah, that is one great thing to come out of this, uh, come out of Origins, because it's because of Origins disaster that we saw the great Deadpool in 2016. So you know, it's, it's not entirely bad. But but the movie in itself was awful. Um, I felt it had potential because an origin story for Wolverine was very interesting to me. Um, Saber Two very interesting as well. Um, and oh yeah, by the way, Cyclops was in this. I forgot that for some reason completely. Cyclops was in this movie and I was just like, oh yeah. And now I remember, like I, I completely forgot. I forgot a lot of this movie actually. And also Xavier as well at the end, he turns up to uh, save the kids. William Strike has kids, uh, locked up mutant kids obviously. He's hunt hunted down mutants, locked them up. Um, and yeah, he, he needed, I think, mutants abilities and material, not material, but he needed like, resources to uh, build Weapon X aka Deadpool or Weapon was it Weapon 11 I think it was that he made Deadpool with but he need the last piece of the puzzle that he needed was uh, Wolverine's adamantium I think and um, the first thing he needed was his son so I guess he killed his son his son killed his wife as well I forgot that as well I was like oh maybe that's why he hates mutants so much because Strike is an annoying guy but yeah I, I, I forgot that origin as well I was like Oh, his son was a mutant and he killed his wife. I forgot all about that. I just, I just forgot all about that. But, um, yeah, the whole Deadpool thing. It could have worked. Like, if we got the 2016 Deadpool in the end and he was fighting Wolverine, it might have worked that way. But just the way it was done in that movie was just ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous. He was quite cool at first, even though it was an actor at first. Um, when he was just a normal guy, just Ryan Reynolds. At, in the beginning, in the start of the movie, when there were like a team of mutants hunting down other people, he was quite cool then. But after the experiment and stuff, that just went all wrong. Um, the Wolverine experiment storyline uh, part of it was, to be fair, that was quite interesting because the whole procedure behind it, putting putting all his adamantium in his body, um, it was pretty painful. And uh, yeah, when he came out of those claws, when they said the razors, obviously Striker um, put adamantium in him. And he survived, obviously. Uh, not many can survive the operation, but he did. His, his brother apparently couldn't, and his brother was a bit jealous because his brother... I think, well, obviously they were a mutant group. Him, his brother, were fighting through world wars. And obviously, um, Logan killed his uh, 
killed his father as well so that was another thing at the start of the movie a very dark storyline anyway obviously they both don't age they're fighting through world wars then they're part of this mutant group and then eventually obviously logan leaves because he, does, he doesn't agree with um what's going on and yeah years later um his brother Sabretooth is hunting down the team so yeah that, that, that's where it all stems from and he supposedly kills wolverine's wife wolverine's storylines are just so tragic Man, the, the guy, can the guy catch a break? Can he get like a bit of happiness? Like seriously, like I'm, I'm sure he did to be fair, but geez, everyone. Like, um, what's the girl's name again? Kayla. Kayla in this movie, um, Jean Grey, who he had to kill. Um, his own, his own flipping Laura. Laura in Logan as well. Unbelievable. He just, the guy has, one of the most miserable and tragic storylines even though this movie is terrible I, I really it makes it really makes me, it really makes me feel for him it makes me feel for him because he suffers so damn much like jeez like the amount of trauma he gets it's like it's it's a surprise like he 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 must have like he he must be very strong emotionally to like to never turn into a villain you know i'm sure he has been a villain, a villain at some point in comic books but the fact that he's never turned into like a properly a proper bad guy, I think thing that kind of says something about him, about his resilience in a way, you know, because he goes through so much. Like a lot of people, just a lot of men just would not be able to take the sort of trauma he does. But somehow he still wants to fight for people. He wants to help people, and I think that's great. I think that's great. But yeah, I love the thing about these movies is Origins and the Wolverine. The, the problem with both of these movies is. Um, they're both PG-13, they're both 12. I mean, PG-13 is what it's called in America, but it's, here it's called a 12 rating, which is what most movies are rated. Um, and rated R in America is a 15 over here. It's, it's, it's a really weird age rating system. But anyway, um, because it's a PG-13, you can't really show much blood or much detail. And I think a lot of Wolverine kills just don't come off as that good, just because, like... You can't really show the brutality of it, you know? And I think it takes away from the fight scenes because, especially after seeing Logan, Logan was just amazingly done. Especially after seeing that, I think like watching these movies, watching Wolverine fight is cool, uh, Berserker mode as well, but when there's not really any blood and not really much detail, it just takes away from it. It takes away from how, how brutal it is. But yeah, um, yeah, Origins, Origins was just, I don't know what to say really. Origins was just all over the place. It, his, his girl didn't actually die either. She was actually like playing him. She was pretending to be dead. It was part of the plan because um, Striker had her sister. So you understand why she did it. Um, and she can get people to do what they want by touching him as well. So who knows how long she was playing Logan, you know? Because I feel like that, that love story was real. But she was still playing him in a way. She had a deal with him as well. So yeah, that, that, that was pretty sad. She did save her sister though. And... Um, all the mutants, or at least most of the mutants in there, were saved, including Scott, Scott Summers, and they escaped, and they got saved by Xavier as well. Like when when they're when they're escaping, um, obviously you hear Xavier's voice talking to Scott in his head, and I was just like, oh yeah, he's in this. Like I didn't, for some reason, I completely forgot that Xavier turns up at the end, and I forgot that Scott was even in this. But that was a cool like origin to see of that as well, to like. To, to see like wh when he got help. I think I think it takes place in the 70s. I think in the 70s like no I mean the movie starts in like 19 very early 1900s but it ends in the 70s. So yeah um, about 20 years I think before uh, before the first X-Men movie. So yeah the timeline's so confusing because um, I mean the timeline was fine up, up, up until up until the last stand and origins but then days of future past happened and then it's just all over the place and i think like dark phoenix is only like a few years before the original x-men movie so it's really weird you know because if the original x-men movie is just a few years after dark phoenix and they're a lot older in that movie it's just it's just really weird and random in it but yeah it, it, it is what it is uh but yeah i definitely prefer the younger versions though overall the, i can't wait for the next episode of this because it might not be next week though, because I'm playing. I might do something else next week. We'll see. It might be next week, but first class, there's a future past. 
They're so damn good. Oh yeah, another thing, Gambit. Gambit is someone who's pretty cool. And they've, they've apparently been working on a Gambit movie, but I don't think it's happening now because of the Disney stuff and because it's been delayed like constantly. Gambit was supposed to come out in 2016 with Deadpool in the same year. Meant to, be, meant to get a Gambit movie, Channing Tatum, and it just never happened. Like, I don't, I, I, I just don't get it. We, we should have got it. I think it would have been cool to see that movie. I, I, I think he was pretty cool in Origins. I, I quite liked him. A lot of people didn't, I think, but I quite liked him. Um, I didn't like most of the mutants, to be fair. Most of the main mutants in that mutant team didn't really like. I liked Deadpool before he turned into that monstrosity. Um, I love, obviously, I love Wolverine. Uh, Sabretooth was interesting, at least. Um, but yeah, where is Sabretooth, though? That, that is a question. That is a question. Where is Sabretooth? Because he didn't die. I'm pretty sure, like, I mean, he was in X Men, the 2000 movie, but I'm pretty sure he did not die. So, where, where is he? Where was he in Logan? That's what I want to know. Because I, I, I have a feeling that he wasn't dead. Because I know they were ref referencing in that movie that um, mutants were mostly dead at that point. But I just don't, like, Laura, Logan and Xavier were one of the last mutants, one of the last groups of mutants. I just feel like Sabretooth was alive somewhere. And I feel like they could have put him in Logan. But we never really see him die, do we? Unless I forgot something from the original trilogy, which I don't think I did. But I'm pretty sure Sabretooth is still alive in that universe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But that's a conspiracy theory there. Not a conspiracy theory. But it's, but it's a theory but that is probably alive. Um, so yeah. I, I don't think we'll ever find out though now. Because obviously the universe is going to be over soon. And I don't think he would be in Dark Phoenix. Like why would he? But um, yeah anyway. Um, onto the Wolverine. This for me was a much improved movie. Massive improvement on the original uh, X-Men Origins. Um, it was an origin story, obviously, it was a continuation. Uh, takes place, I think... When does it? It comes out after First Class, I think. In, t in the middle of First Class and Days of Future Past. Um, and yeah, I think... It's not a great movie. It's not like that, like... It's not groundbreaking, it's not amazing. The action scenes, I think, could be better, but they hold back. If, if these are rated R, they'd be so much better. Um, but uh, the quality dropped a little bit towards the second half of the of, of the uh, of the movie. The first half was actually better overall. Very intense. I love the chase scenes, the fight scenes. Um, but yeah, it was just good. It was good. It's just that Origins was so bad. This just looks so much so much better. The second one, uh, visually as well, much better. Um, and obviously, there's that mutant Viper as well who takes away his powers. As w I mean, his powers are still there technically, but he can't regenerate as much. So that was pretty cool to see like Wolverine with a weakness, not invincible, trying to fight off gunmen. Uh, that was an interest interesting to see how he recovered and stuff. Um, but yeah, the villain was okay. The villain was at least interesting. Um, I wonder which war that was. I think yeah. I, I mean, I know what war it is. Like I want no. What I was what, what I was asking was. I wonder where Sabretooth was in that scene as well. In the beginning scene when that nuke goes off and he saves that guy. Because Logan and his brother, they, they fought through wars constantly. So where was his brother in this in this one? I wonder. But yeah, I, I keep asking where Sabretooth. Like, I want to know. Like where, where was he here? Where was he there? I want to know where he is. Because we, di um, we didn't see him die. That, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. And it would have been nice to see him in, in Logan. That, that's all I'm saying as well. Um, but yeah, there's a reference actually in the Wolverine movie to uh, Ronin. Ronin is what Hawkeye turns into in uh, Avengers Endgame and in the comics as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that's confirmed now. We saw him in a Ronin suit in the Avengers Endgame trailer. Um, I'm pretty sure Ronin is not like specific to Hawkeye, but it's a, it's a, it's a reference to a samurai samurai sort of. Uh, yeah, it's a, a ninja. Wait, a ninja? I f I've forgotten exactly what she said. I just got Ronan written down here, but um, a warrior, a samurai warrior, I think it was called Ronan. And I think, in a way, that was a reference, uh, even though it's not in the same universe. I think that was, in a way, a reference. And I think in Endgame, um, Clint is somewhere in, like, maybe in Japan, somewhere in Asia, anyway, I think. So. 
I mean, it's obviously, it's obviously not connected, but I think that that kind of intrigued me. I was like, it's probably just a coincidence, to be honest. It's just a coincidence. But I, I just thought that that was like, oh, she said, she said Ronin? And I was just like, oh, okay. But it, anyway, um, also, also, the girl, the, the purple-haired girl who came and get Logan, um, came and got Logan to go to Japan to help this guy, um, she said that she, she's obviously the person that can witness people's deaths. And she said she witnessed his death. And she mentioned that, I see you on your back. There's blood everywhere. You're holding your own heart in your hand. Now I think, um, I think everyone thinks this already anyway. This is, this is a massive foreshadowing to uh, Wolverine's death in Logan. Like if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. Like, um, I see you on your back. There's blood everywhere. You're holding your own heart in your hand. His heart being his daughter. He was, he was holding his hand at the end of Logan. I, I felt that was excellent foreshadowing. I know in that movie, they did not know they were making Logan, to be fair. Maybe it was in the plan, I don't know. But still, that was really good foreshadowing. Because cause, um, in the movie, um, there was a similar situation where she saw him die. And he didn't die. And, 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 and they said she was wrong. But was she wrong? Technically, it still happened in a different way. Just in another movie in the future so technically she did see his death so yeah the, i think that was a really cool like a really a really interesting connection i gotta say so uh yeah that's that's all i gotta say really sorry i don't, I don't go into, into much depth because i don't think i need to um i'm just going to talk about them what i think about them that's the main point of this uh, just to tell you what i think about these movies and i don't feel these movies need to go into that much detail to be honest um neither movie is great it's just that the second one is a lot better and it's actually pretty good the first one was just terrible um but i still think it's worth checking out though i think it's worth checking out just to remember more things and i like wolverine's storyline even though even though origins is terrible um my favorite part of the x-men movies have been wolverine's path from the first x-men movie up to up until days of future past up until logan i mean sorry so i i just i i, I like the storyline even though it's so tragic um, it's just a character that I really like, so I had to add these on, that's for sure, even though I don't think I like these movies anyway. The second one though, I, I think was a big improvement, and as I said, it was, it was pretty good. So yeah, if I was to rate them, uh, Origins, like 2 out of 10, that, 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 and, that, and that's being nice, the Wolverine, um, I would give a 7. I'd give a 7. It, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Definitely had some faults, but it, it was alright. It was alright. Uh, so yeah, that's about it, really. Um, next episode would be First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse, which is also not that good. But we'll watch that as well, and I'll talk about that as well. Probably a bit more detail with that episode. Um, as I said, probably, I think I said already, it might not be next week, just because there is something Endgame related I want to do. I just don't know when I'm going to do it. And I, It might be after this, after this marathon or before it, but it might be next week. So this might be interrupted. And, and yeah, it's not urgent anyway because Dark Phoenix doesn't come out until June anyway. So we got time until then for two more episodes anyway. So uh, yeah, um, there'll be more marathons coming soon, by the way. I, no, no, actually, actually not, don't say that, David. Off. They'll be coming at some point. Obviously, if I say I'm going to do them now, then uh, you'll be waiting for them. You might be waiting for them anyway, and then I'll be like, haven't done them yet, and then and then it might be like next year by the time I get to them. So I'm not going to say what they are. But I've got other marathons written down. That's all I can say. And also I'll do that. I want to do that series where I watch random movies that I haven't seen before. And that will probably be a once a month thing at some point. Probably after, probably in the summer onwards, it'll be like a once a month episode of me watching random movies. This is the penultimate episode for X-Men. Uh, X-Men movie marathon. This is a build up to Dark Phoenix. Episode 4 is not needed because it's uh, Logan. So I don't really need to do that, but I want to do it because it's a great movie. So I'm, that'll, that'll be probably be next week, probably. And after that, probably be Infinity War. No, Endgame stuff. It'll probably be like Endgame theories, maybe. I don't know. I'll do something on Endgame. I'll do some things on Marvel, on MCU stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a build up to Dark Phoenix, obviously. And this is the, this for me is the most relevant. This is the most relevant. Uh, these are the most relevant movies that we need to watch for Dark Phoenix. Obviously, the beginnings trilogy, as it said. As it says over here, there we go. I call it the prequel trilogy, but it's it's the beginnings. It all came like I got it on Black Friday. I got a uh, 
a massive box set. You get three covers. Uh, one, in one of them you get the original trilogy, the other one you get the first two Wolverine movies, and the third one you get this. You get First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse Times 2. You get a 3D version as well, and I don't have 3D TV anyway, but I think it was pretty cool. All on Blu-ray, I got it really cheap as well. It was like really, really cheap. So it was really, it was a proper bargain, proper bargain. Anyway, yeah, uh, let's talk about those movies. Um, for me, the beginnings trilogy, the original, not the original, sorry, the prequel trilogy with the younger versions, for me, is a far better trilogy than the original trilogy. I just think it's, I just think it's amazing. Like, apart from Apocalypse, Apocalypse is not good. It's so, it's disappointing, underwhelming. Um, but if you put it side by side, the trilogies as a whole, the prequels are better. First Class, for me, is much better than the original X-Men movie. The original one is not bad. It's pretty good, actually. Even X2 is pretty good as well. But I was not a big fan. I was not a huge fan. I liked Wolverine. I liked Storm. I liked some of the characters. I, I liked some of the characters. Um, but I wasn't a huge fan of those movies. Sorry, I was I'm not sure. I wasn't a... <laughs> that put me off guard. Uh, that scared me as well. It's like 3am right now. I wasn't a huge fan of that movie. Um, of those movies, those first two movies. Uh, it, but I, I watched them and I liked them because I cared about the characters. But again, wasn't a huge fan. The first class for me was great. It was amazing. Days of Future Past, even better. For me, this was the best X-Men team-up movie. By far for me. In fact, the only movie in that universe that I feel was better is Logan. Like I would say, this is better than every other X-Men movie apart from Logan. I'd say it's even better, better than Deadpool as well, 1 and 2. Days of Future, Days of Future Past, I think, is, is that good. I think it's flipping amazing. I, I, it was just amazing and an honour. It felt like an honour to watch it again, honestly. Days of Future Past is just... That's how you do a team-up movie. It was just so damn good. And it was really deep as well. Like, seeing, seeing some people die was uh, very sad to see. It was very dark and depressing. But it was great, you know, that, that was bloody great. So much better than X2. And finally Apocalypse. I don't think it was good. Um, but it was still better than Last Stand. Last Stand was just... The only one that was worse than Last Stand was Origins. And then again, those are the only two movies that are worse than Apocalypse. But I feel like if I was to rank things, I was like... I would put Logan first, Days of Future Past, Probably Deadpool. Deadpool's not part of, Man part of Manfred, by the way, but it's in that universe. Then maybe Deadpool, then... Um, then I guess Deadpool 2, I guess. Um, First Class would be in there as well, in that area, with Deadpool and Deadpool 2. Um, what am I missing? Then I guess would be... Uh, X2, then the Wolverine, then the original X-Men, something in that, those three in some order. And then, then there'd be a big gap, then Apocalypse, then another big gap, then Last Dan and Origins. That's, that's how I'd probably rank it, to be honest. Yeah, that's how I'd probably rank it. Logan at the top, there's a future pass right, right behind. First class Deadpool movies. Yeah, I, I mentioned it already, but yeah, Apocalypse was not very good. Um, partly because it was underwhelming, you know, just genuinely just... There was so much good build up to it, in my opinion. I mean, they didn't build up to Apocalypse, but I mean, like, First Class was great for me. There's a Future Pass was amazing for me. And after those two great movies, how did they mess up so badly with Apocalypse? It just... It's just annoying, you know? Apocalypse is a proper villain. He's powerful. And he should have been, like, Thanos, or Darkseid, or Galactus. Proper Galactus, by the way, not the one from Rise of Silver Surfer, that was just a load, a load of rubbish as well. But Apocalypse should be like one of those villains, like Thanos in Infinity War. He should have been that good, but he wasn't. He was nowhere near. It just, it just didn't work. And the voice was weird as well. I don't know if that was comic book stuff. I have no idea. And another thing that really pissed me off was um, Quicksilver, right? Uh, no, not Quicksilver himself. But the fact that Quicksilver did not tell Magneto that he's his son, that that annoyed me. I'm like, Magneto's your dad, mate. Just tell him. 
Like, if this doesn't happen in Dark Phoenix, I'll be annoyed. Like, even if it's a great movie, like, I'll, I'll think if it's a great movie, I'll love it, of course. But if, if they close it out and Eric still doesn't know that Quicksilver is his son, I'll be disappointed. Like, they're ending it there, right? Just go all out, put everything in there, just give us that scene, that moment. I just, I just want to see his reaction. I just want to see what, what happens when, uh, when he tells him. He better, I assume P Peter is in um, um, Dark Phoenix, right? I would assume so, anyway. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they carry him over though, because Quicksilver had some of the best scenes in this trilogy, to be fair. There's a future pass, you know what I'm talking about, that time-stopping scene in the kitchen, that was awesome, and obviously in Apocalypse as well, when he was um, saving, saving people from, from the house blowing up as well. And to be fair, that's why Apocalypse wasn't that bad, it wasn't as bad as Last Stand, because it had Quicksilver in it, who was cool. And it had Magneto, who was also like, Magneto was one of the best parts of the movie for me. Like, for me, if you remember the end of, if you remember Apocalypse at the end, um, where Apocalypse is, is about to win, really, he's found Charles, he's about to destroy everyone, and then Magneto saves them, and he throws the metal bars at him, drawing the X sign. For me, when Magneto saves them, that is, that is one of the most epic scenes, actually. Even though it's a disappointing movie, I thought that was cool. Like, I do, I do like that, when um, they look like they're losing, then someone just comes in and saves the day, someone you don't expect. And uh, Magneto just pulled it off so well. And if it wasn't for Magneto and uh, Quicksilver, it would have been completely terrible. So, um, they saved parts of the movie for me. They saved part also, Wolverine's cameo in Apocalypse. Yeah, that as well, that, that was pretty cool. Well, that, does it really matter now, to be fair, because they reset the timelines, there's so many different timelines now. To be fair, it could be one timeline, when you think about it, because um, these movies happening now could be like, what happens before. Because in Days of Future Past, when it's all fixed, Logan goes back, goes back to the present. And um, he goes and talks to Charles about 1973, where they last left off. And Charles was like, you're back. So wasn't that the timeline from the prequels? I can no, I think this confuses everyone to be honest. How many timelines are there? <laughs> it, it, it seems like there's a lot, but it seems like you could fit it into one. But we'll see, then again, Gene, Scott, everyone's alive when uh, Logan, um, when Days of Future Past at the end, everyone's alive. And then in Logan, they're all dead. They reference it. Like, this Logan happens after Days of Future Past, I'm pretty sure, is in that timeline. And obviously, that's very tragic the way it ended. And I'm pretty sure all the X-Men died in that one. They didn't show it, but I'm pretty sure they did. From Charles. Um, that's going to be depressing to uh, watch next week, I've got to say, but I'm definitely going to watch it. But, um, yeah, the timeline just... Let's just forget about the timelines, okay? It's, it's messed up. But they still make some good stuff, which is good. Um, also, in, in First Class, I'm talking about this the wrong way, by the way. I should have talked about it in, in order, but in First Class, Magneto's origin, um, they did it again, uh, like in the original uh, trilogy in the first movie. And they did, they did it better this time, I think. Um, one of the reasons I prefer the original, not the original, sorry, keep saying original because it's before. One of the reasons I prefer the beginnings trilogy is uh, I like the younger versions. like. I prefer Michael Fassbender's Magneto to Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen is good, but I prefer Michael Fassbender. And I prefer James McAvoy as Charles Xavier as well. It's not all the same though, like Storm I prefer Halle Berry, definitely by far. With Jean it's hard to tell. Um, wasn't a big fan of Jean in the original trilogy, but I still like understood her powers. I, I liked her, um, but after after the last stand it kind of ruined it for me. And, and with Sophie Turner, she hasn't really like she hasn't done much yet. I mean, she's beaten Apocalypse. To get that spoiler alert, there's a spoiler video, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's beaten Apocalypse, but apart from that, she's only been in Apocalypse. That's the only movie she's been in, so you can't really judge her until Dark Phoenix comes out. So, yeah, hopefully, like, if they do that story right, then I guess she'd be better than, uh, I've forgotten the actress's name for the original. Um, Mystique, I prefer the older one. Um, it's mainly because they made Jennifer Lawrence's mystique annoying. They made it, and they made her annoying because she was she was such a, a prominent actor actress back then. She was so popular, 
um, because of the Hunger Games and other things as well. She, she was famous. She was at the top of her game at the time. And I think because of that, um, they centered they centered the movies around her in a way, you know, especially in Apocalypse as well, where she's leader of X-Men now. It's just they put her as like the face of the X-Men, like it just it didn't work. It just didn't work. And I think they did it just because she's Jennifer Lawrence. And to be fair, they did it with Wolverine as well. That like they pushed Wolverine in front of us. Um, they really centered a lot of storylines around Wolverine. But Wolverine, the thing is, we all like Wolverine. With, with, with Mystique, it was different. You know, it was very different. To center it around her was just a really weird decision, you know? Um, and yeah, based on the trailers for Dark Phoenix, they, it looks like she might actually die pretty early in the movie. Unless the trailers have tricked us. But if the trailers add up the way I think they add up, then I think they showed her death in the trailers. Watch trailer two again. I think you know. I think you'll understand what I mean. But um, yeah, yeah, they centered it too much around Mystique. That's that's one of the problems, especially in Apocalypse as well. Um, with Storm, with Storm, I prefer. I, I, I actually I said that already, don't I? I? Said that already. With Beast, with Beast, um, it's fifty-fifty. I don't know who I prefer, original or prequel. Um, Scotts, I prefer the original Scott actually. So it's mainly Charles and. Charles and Magneto. It's it's mainly Charles and Eric that I prefer the versions of, but I still prefer in general the younger X Men. I just think their movies are better, and I think it's cooler. And Days of Future Past just, just did it for me because they combined the two. They combined the um, older X Men and the younger X Men. And I think that was pretty cool. And I and I like how it was Charles talking to his older self at one point. I think that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah. Um, also another thing. Wolverine's cameo in first class, that was pretty funny. It was like five seconds, but apparently that was not meant to be the final cut. Apparently. If you know what I'm talking about, right? Wolverine's in a bar, Magneto and Charles are coming to um coming in to uh recruit him. He's like, go away in a more rude way, you know what I mean? I try not to swear because YouTube centers out swearing nowadays. But um yeah, and then he tells them to do one and they go off. And he turns around, and apparently they actually went off to refilm the scene, and he was turning around. I don't know if that's hundred percent true, but apparently it's, it's rumored to be true. Apparently, that wasn't the final, and that wasn't. Uh, they they went to reshoot that again, apparently. But I think that's still pretty. It was still pretty funny. Um, in Days of Future Past, I saw something interesting actually. Recently, you might see me review The Gifted. The Gifted is a mutant show related to the X Men. The X-Men themselves are not in this movie, are not in this TV show, but it's related to it. It's take place in the future. The X-Men don't exist anymore because of something that happened, um, and it and it focuses on some mutant groups. And in the main mutant group, the the heroes of that show, um, there's two characters called Blink and Thunderbird. Blink can go through portals, and Thunderbird has endurance. He can like he has super speed and strength. Um, and when I saw them in Days of Future Past, I was like, wait a second, those were the ones from The Gifted. Like, the guy had the same hair and everything, the girl was, had, she was going through purple portals, and I was like, that was in The Gifted. Like, are they, are they the same characters? So I was looking up, as, as I was watching, I was looking it up on IMDb. Um, and yeah, it was Blink, it was Blink, who was in, it was different actors though, it, was, it wasn't the same actors. But it was different, but I knew it was the same character. As soon as I saw, the, saw their powers, I was like, oh yeah, they're in The Gifted. So I looked it up, and yeah, it was Blink. But the one of Days of Future Past is the brother to the one in The Gifted. If you haven't seen both, you're probably confused right now. So <laughs> I should, probably should just move on from this. But still, almost the same. The same character, the girl's the same character. And the boy is the brother of the character on the TV show, The Gifted. I just think that's pretty interesting. I'm pretty sure the TV show is not connected. I'm pretty sure it's, it's in its own timeline, but I still think that's pretty cool. I still think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, talk about Quicksilver scenes, Magneto. And uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's about it really. I, I, thought, I think I covered everything. Everything that I wanted to say anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, this, this this is overall the overall is there's a really good trilogy, and um, I think part of the reason they're doing Dark Phoenix is it's not just to like close it out, 
but also I think they're trying to give us something that they wanted to give us for Apocalypse. I think like Apocalypse was, was supposed to be like the the big one, the great one to cap it all off. But I think because it failed, I think that's why they're doing Dark Phoenix. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they want to do it anyway. But um, I really hope they close out really well. Um, even though it's going to the MCU now, I think Fox Marvel have done pretty well with the X-Men. Not Fantastic Four, but with the X-Men, I think they've done pretty well. So I think uh, they can be proud of that, especially Logan, Deadpool, they brought us all of that. Um, I would love Quicksilver to stay in the MCU, like this version of him from the X-Men movies, that, that Peter guy, the, act, the actor who plays him. I would love the MCU to hire him, but I don't think they will. I think the only one they'll carry over is Ryan Reynolds. Sorry, I lost my voice there, completely lost it, started having a coughing fit for some reason. I've been talking too much today. I think that's what it is, been recording too much. Anyway, uh... Yeah, as, as I was saying, um, what was I saying? Yeah, from the X-Men in the Fox uni universe, I think the only one they're carrying over is Ryan Reynolds. I mean, he's already on Disney's um, Disney's page. On the, 20, on the 20th of March, the deal was done. Disney got Fox, and um, straight away on Disney's website, they put multiple things, there, and they put MCU stuff, Star Wars stuff, they put like main pictures, Pixar, Disney, whatever. And on there, they had Deadpool. Like he, he was literally on like the banner on the front page. I was just like, okay. Well, that's interesting, especially considering it's Disney as well. Like they're putting a guy who slices people up with swords, you know? I guess he's gonna be like a big part of something, maybe. Cause if they put him on like, on front page, it has got to be something in there, you know? So, I mean, definitely, I mean, they were never going to, like, get rid of Ryan Reynolds, obviously. They were always going to get him in. Um, so I think he's the only one, and for him it works, because he's got the fourth wall stuff and stuff. But for everyone else, I don't think they're recasting any. I, I think they're recasting everyone else apart from Deadpool. But I would, if, if I could choose, I'd prefer that version of Quicksilver to come along. To be fair, I, would, I wouldn't mind Michael Fassbender. I wouldn't mind him. You see, because Wanda, Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, is one of the Avengers, and assuming she comes back in Endgame, her father is Magneto. Her father is Magneto, and I know she's been through a lot in the MCU, but I would love to see her meet her father. I would love to see her. And they're doing a Disney TV show for her. I hope she meets her father in that series, or in a movie. I just, I just hope she does. Maybe it happens in, because uh, there's rumours about Avengers vs X-Men. That'd be a movie that they build up to next. That might be the next big thing. Not really 100% sure on that, but um, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? If they did that. And if they did that, they could like introduce a story arc, Magneto. I don't know. I just, I just want Wanda to meet her father. I, I, I just want it. I just want to see what could happen with her. This is your boy Davidoff, please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, have a good day. And one more thing, in first class, Magneto's theme song, damn good. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, if you remember, you remember, but Magneto's uh, theme song in first class, look it up, it's, 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 I like it, I like it. Anyway, yeah, see ya.